So we hear the iron booth here, the neural net. So, are you talking about white spaces? Yeah, so white spaces, uh, white space radio is a technology that allows unlicensed use of TV channels that aren't needed for, white sp for um, TV transmissions. And that means that um, a lot, there's a lot of new spectrum being made available um, in the US initially, but around the world later on. And that spectrum is on a really good frequency. In general, with, with RF, the lower the frequency, the farther signals travel, and the, um, the, the more they penetrate through things like trees and buildings and um, other obstructions. So where are we right now? Uh, mostly so, using smartphones. So, uh, smartphones today mostly use um, 1900 megahertz, um, 1700, and now L 3G um, or 4G LTE devices in the US are on the 700 megahertz band. They're already going here, the LTE guys? The LTE band guys are using this, and Verizon and AT&T paid 20 billion dollars for this spectrum. They bought this from the government, but only some of it. They, um, so basically they've got, they've got up to about 40 megahertz each. They paid a license fee of 20 billion dollars. But there's more of that in spectrum, or is so that all of it? In the white spaces, there's yeah. um, up to 200 megahertz of that spectrum available. And the difference is customers can use it free of charge. So a lot of people using our radios, even though they paid zero for Spectrum, find that they actually have much more Spectrum available than Verizon or AT&T in some markets. So wait a second, uh, 700 megahertz, 200 megahertz, how does it work? Is it from 600 to uh, okay. 800? So or? What we're talking about here, it's very, it is very confusing. This is the bit RF guys talk about a lot. So you've got, you've got a couple of different um, things that are important to consider on um, with Spectrum. First is the frequency. And basically, um, in general, the lower the frequency, the better. And the second is the amount of um, the bandwidth that you have available. So bandwidth is a confusing term because people use it to mean data rate as well, which is, I'll, I'll, I'll use the term data rate. What I mean by bandwidth is that it's the actual amount of frequency that you have. So um, a TV channel, for example, is six megahertz wide. So it might be from 490 to 496 megahertz. That's six megahertz of bandwidth. Now, in total, the white spaces have about 200 megahertz of bandwidth available. It's here. And it's between about 470 and 690 megahertz in frequency. Worldwide or only in the US or what? Currently, it's only in the US. Yeah. Um, but um, what were um, Canada yesterday, actually, so it's hot off the press, Canada announced they were going to allow white spaces. And um, a lot of uh, the UK is looking at allowing white spaces right now. The EU has got a working group looking at it. France? What are they doing? They're, they're working with the EU. How about Denmark? It's all EU, basically. So. Switzerland? Switzerland, I'm not sure. What about <laughs> Africa? Africa, well, um, we're not doing that much in Africa, but a lot of, um, a lot of white space advocates like Google and Microsoft are very interested in Africa because there are at least 300 million people there who don't have internet access. And white space is a good way of actually linking them up. And how about Asia? Who's doing white space? So, yeah, so um, uh, Singapore is um, talking about allowing white space uh, networks, and Nuld's working on a, uh, a network there. Um, and Japan, and there, there are other countries. Now, the way it usually works, actually, with regulators, it tends to be quite a conservative bunch for good reason. Why? Because, um, you know, I think um, uh, if they're not careful, you can end up with um, interference. And that can cause problems. You know, you don't want to have interference with people's TV transmissions uh, because uh, you know there's probably nothing more, nothing that's going to make you unpopular faster than that. So they're keen to avoid it. The only, uh, uh, but seeing the technology deployed and working well in the US will um, will make them um, more willing to open things up. So. I mean, this looks awesome. So what are you doing here? What are you talking about? So, what are you showing? So what, we've got a couple of radios here. Um, now, these radios are uh, they're pretty big big right now. You know, so you've got to use your imagination to see how small they can get ultimately. But already, these radios are being used by 
uh, people like wireless internet service providers and oil and gas companies to enable long-range non-line-of-sight links. So for example, um, if, you, uh, if you live in a rural area at the moment, you may not have any access to the internet. And um, the, eco the economics of laying fiber or cabled connections out to rural areas where there's low population density just don't add up. So it's far better if you can just put up one base station somewhere, and then once you have the base station, you can then link up a whole big area uh, without needing to put any wires anywhere. And people have been doing that for years. Now, the problem they're facing, though, is that um, in areas where there are a lot of trees or where there are hills or buildings, then um, it's virtually impossible to get links out to customers unless they have line of sight to the base station. And um, white space radios, because they operate on a low frequency, they don't need line of sight. And so we're working with a lot of uh, internet providers to actually get people uh, in forested areas linked up to the internet. So did you say this is a base station? And did you say for years, but it's not been white space until now? Or has it been already? Yeah, so in the past, then, um, wireless, um, wireless internet service providers have, have um, used wireless technology to link people up to the internet for a long time. But they've generally used um, technologies that are often based on Wi-Fi to do that. And those technologies operate on a high frequency, so either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. And um, there's nothing wrong with them. They, they do work really well sometimes. But what you end up with is um, connections that only work when um, there's a line of sight. But how, what did you change to get the white space support in here? Is it white space now in this? Yeah, yeah. This is, is, is that totally new, totally crazy? or It's totally new, yeah. So it's a completely new radio architecture. And, and it needs to be to meet the FCC requirements, which are very tough. FCC is US? Yeah. So this is US compliant? Or? At the moment, white space is only legal in the US. Only in the, a few states or everywhere in the US? It's legal across the US. But um, you know, it, it, will, um, it, it requires a regulatory change. And governments always take a long time to do things. But There's I'm, a new president next week. Yeah, but it's... What um, should he do? Um, Elect a new uh, FCC, uh, FCC or FTC, what's it called, a new board, and get it done? They've already done it. So, But totally done or not totally done? It's done. It's done? Yeah, it's done. In the US, it's done. So how come we can't go and buy a smartphone with a white space today? Well, um, so it only, got, it only got completed in, um, in um, February. And also, there's a question of technology maturity. So, you know... Um, This, uh, this device is just the radio here. It's a lot bigger than a smartphone. Why is it so big? Because if you open this up and look inside, um, implementing the radio needs about 200 components. Now, if you look at a uh, Wi-Fi implementation, you just have generally a single chip. Now, basically, um, there's nothing inherent in white space that means that you can't eventually get it down to that level of um, integration. But it takes time. You know, Wi-Fi devices are probably on there like seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth generation, and every time you go down a different generation, things get smaller and um, and, and um, more power efficient. Yeah, it will take us a few years before we can get to um, that kind of size with a white space device. How many few years? Um, well, uh, you know, it's um, it's difficult to say. And primarily, the reason why I'm hesitating is because I don't think its uh, main use will be in smartphones. I think there are already good technologies for smartphones, like LTE, for example. And, you know, they'll just get better. I think where white space will get used is it'll get used a lot in fixed wireless to start with. Um, and for fixed wireless, a device this big is no problem. You know, it gets bolted to the side of a house. It's no issue how big it is. And then I think it will, um, it will then get used for machine-to-machine um, -machine communications. You know, people talk about the Internet of Things. And the issue with the Internet of Things is getting a lot of um, machines linked up really um, requires a new standard and new technology. Uh, they need their own network. Um, and LTE isn't very suitable for, um, for, um, for, for that. And I think white space networks are based on the weightless standard. Good. So uh, 50 billion devices connected on white space? Yeah. Two dollar chips? Yeah. How soon? 
Um, I think we'll we'll have the at the moment creating a white space device is hundreds of dollars. Yeah. We'll have it down to about ten dollars um, by um, sometime in the first half of next year. First half next year. It'll be out down to about ten dollars. Two dollars might that? take two or three years. Is that new tech? So no, no, we are doing it. We're, we're, um, we're, we're working on that ourselves. There are also several other companies working on getting this done. And this is your tagline. The That's internet right. of everything. Yeah. Okay, $10, 2013. That sounds cheap enough. And uh, how small? Well, it depends what you want to do. I mean, basically, if you want to... I mean, our vision is that you should be able to get... Um, get um, uh, white space into, you know, 50 billion devices across the world, right? And actually, um, if you want to get into, say, a coffee machine, the bill of materials for the entire coffee machine might be, you know, I don't know, 20 or 30 dollars. So you do need to get down to a very low cost for wireless in order to make that happen. So why would you, why would you put wireless in your uh, coffee machine? Well, I'd like my Nespresso machine to reorder coffee when I run out. And there's no reason why you couldn't make that happen. You could actually do it today, but the cost of the wireless technology you need to put in there is too expensive. And uh, so, I've been blogging about, uh, uh, do you know Fon, Fon the Wi-Fi yeah. sharing? Yeah, I really like Fon, yeah. Wouldn't it be awesome if there was white spaces Fon? Yeah, yeah, actually I, I, have, I have talked to them on occasions about it. I think it'd be a great idea. I mean, Fon's a beautiful, beautiful idea. The basic issue with it is, um, um, is that uh, it uses Wi-Fi. And the problem with Wi-Fi, it basically what Fon tries to do is create a municipal wide area network using Wi-Fi. Yeah. And it has a fantastic way of doing it. The issue with it is that Wi-Fi is not very suitable for wide area networks. You know, I've um, recently moved to Mountain View from the US and Google, based in Mountain View, um, uh, have tried to put in place a municipal Wi-Fi network covering the whole city. And they've put like thousands of base stations in to do that. And it's still not working? I've never, I've never ever seen it. On You've my, never um, seen it? Well, I th sometimes it flashes up, you know, when you search for Wi-Fi access points. I've never been able to connect to it. I did connect. Well, you're lucky. Bench. You're very lucky. Near the library. Yeah, yeah well, I've, I've heard it does work in the library, actually. I've not been to the library yet. But, so it's a So basically, the, pro the problem is that you need... Um, Wi-Fi signals just don't go very far. So if you can do it with white space, it go a long way, and uh, you know you can really make things happen. So I, I think I, I think it could could work very well with Fon, and I do like Fon as a model. You say you live in Mountain View. It's kind of like Google Place. Yeah. So are you working with them, or you can say, or you? Um, so I don't, we wouldn't say who we're uh, I can't really say who we're working with, but I think it's on record that Google's really enthusiastic about white space. Larry Page I mean, did a speech a couple years ago. That's years right. Ago. Yeah, that's right. Like, oh, it's important. Yeah, and actually that was a big part in getting the FCC to do something. So you know they've been very influential from that point of view. So you need a database that Google and other guys can just, uh, up to update with uh, so to make sure people don't interfere. Yeah, yeah. So you're quite knowledgeable about white space, actually. So that's. Uh, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. So basically, um, it's um, there are a lot of different um, database vendors out there. So um, uh, Google have said they're going to do one. They haven't actually put one out there yet. Um, two companies have. Um, there's a company called Spectrum Bridge in Florida who've done one, and there's uh, a company called Telcordia who are actually part of Ericsson now, um, who've done one as well and have it approved. Uh, both of them have got some good good stuff, you know, and um, our technology is compatible with either. So, uh, can walk over there? Yeah. yeah um, so, how, it's, it's going to work for sure, right? It's, yeah, I mean, it, it's working already, uh, white space. Um, you know, basically we've got, we've got a lot of people, um, uh, for example, in Alabama, Yes. Um, who are getting white space? Who are getting internet connectivity for the first time uh, because of white space radio? Uh, we've got customers in um, in other parts of the U.S. who are using it for connectivity in oil fields and um, in rural uh, rural locations. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's happening. It's happening. And, yeah. uh... It would be nice to see them in tablets and phones, but that's not the first thing. That's not going to be Chris. the first thing. 